Greetings and peace and welcome to Messiah Lutheran Church. This fourth Wednesday of our Lenten journey, it is great to see all of the ashes still upon our heads, reminding us of our humility in this journey towards the Passion. Let us begin. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Turn us again, O God of our salvation, that the light of your face may shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun, and may the poor be lifted up. A portion of Psalm 116, verses 9 through 19. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I kept my faith even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my consternation, everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. A reading from the 53rd verse of Isaiah. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, And like a sheep that before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, beginning at the 23rd verse. A third time he said to them, Why, what evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross upon him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But, these, but Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, 
Do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. The Word of God. May my words be in harmony with the universe, contribute to its justice, enhance its beauty, and help bring us all to peace in our world. Amen. He handed Jesus over as they wished. Last week, we talked about the power of silence, God's silence, as Jesus was reticent before Pilate. It's reemphasized again this week in Isaiah. It says, He was afflicted and tormented but remained silent. He was like a lamb led to the slaughter, and he remained silent. He was like a sheep before the shearers, and he remained silent. This is the clanging silence of God. In Luke, it says that Pilate asked a third time, three times he's been asked. He asked, what evil has this man done? Because he found no evil in him. But the people, the crowd, were out of control. They had been stirred up, and the mob mentality prevailed. And Jesus starts his walk to Golgotha. Simon of Cyrene is chosen to carry Jesus' cross. He came to Jerusalem for Passover, it's believed, and he gets recruited for a most gruesome task. Remember, Jesus is half dead from the scourging, from the crown, from the beatings, from the humiliation. He is half dead, and he has fallen three times. And so Simon, who was there accidentally and undoubtedly, to my mind, is probably unwilling to do this. But the Roman soldiers leave him no choice. And so he takes up this cross, the cross of Jesus. In Latin, the part that's being carried is called a patubulum. That's the crossbar. The crossbar we spoke of on Sunday the crossbar representing our temporal time, our time walking on this earth. That's what Jesus was carrying, and that's what they put on Simon of Cyrene's back, the crossbar, chronos, our time, us, was placed on Simon's back. And we need to remember what Jesus had said. 
you must pick up your cross and follow me. And that's exactly what Jesus is doing. And Simon, he is following Jesus, carrying that cross. And hopefully, like Simon, we follow Jesus. Because Simon is each of us. And the women, the women of Jerusalem were beating their breasts. Not out of repentance, but out of mourning. Mourning the fact that Jesus, this man who had been their teacher, their rabbi, their healer, is being taken to his death. I think it's important that we hear, once again, what Jesus says at this time. Jesus says to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us. And to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? A curious comment. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? It's thought that this is a proverbial statement The wood, whether green or dry, is being carried now by Simon of Cyrene. Jesus will be placed upon that wood. And perhaps the proverbial meaning of this then is if Jesus, being innocent, meets this fate, what is the fate of guilty Jerusalem? Or, if evil occurs with Jesus present, when he's here with us now, what more will occur in his absence? And so we arrive at Golgotha, the place of the skull, outside the city limits, where those who offended the Roman Empire, were executed. Jesus did not offend the empire. Pilate seemed sure of that. But to make the humiliation continue, he was crucified with two criminals, one on his right and one on the left. More humiliation and more humiliation. But what we have, what we see before us, are three crosses. Three. And in the Bible, three is the number of wholeness, of perfection, of completion. And we've heard this three mentioned three times. Pilate asked three times, what has this man done? And it was completed. Jesus falls three times carrying the cross. And it was completed by Simon of Cyrene. And now they are crucified. This is divine wholeness divine completion. 
And today, we receive as part of our Lenten journey, nails. The nails that kept Jesus on that cross. But what really held Jesus to that cross? Was it the nails? He could have come down. He was taunted by one of the criminals saying just that. Come down. Save us. Save yourself. He could have done that. But he did not. Because he was held there by something far more powerful than nails. He was held there by us. Our sins, our ignorance, our pride. Three things held him there. So it's appropriate that we take these nails home with us today. Because they represent us. Because we are the nails. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Let us give thanks for God's blessing to us, especially today. You bless us indeed, Lord. Stay with us, guide us, protect us. God of love, hear our prayer. Let us bring before God needs and concerns known to us. Hear us, Lord, in these days. Be with us in times of affliction as in ages past. God of love, hear our prayer. Let us bring before God our own needs. We pray for those in need, those who suffer, especially those in this congregation. God of love, hear our prayer. Let us ask for God's guidance and blessing upon our time together. Hear us as we pray for our republic and the world. God of love, hear our prayer. Jesus said, You will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth, I chose you and appointed you to bear fruit that will last. Remember, I will be with you always to the end of time. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated unto you, and then use us, we pray, as you will, but always to your glory and the welfare of your people, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us now and always. Amen. <laughs>